Hello there, this is John V, software evangelist at Jscape, and you're watching another Jscape MFD server tutorial. In today's video, we're going to teach you how to use Azure files as the file storage system of your Jscape MFD server instance. So it's possible to configure Jscape MFD server so that the files your users and other client applications upload to your server are automatically streamed to a cloud storage service. The file transfer client you see there can represent any file transfer client, whether one that's manned by an end user or an application that automatically uploads files to your server. From the client's point of view, the Azure files share will simply appear like a local directory on your server. Before you start configuring anything on Jscape MFD server, you need to have an Azure file share ready. You also need to gather a few pieces of information pertinent to that share which you will enter into your Jscape MFD server settings. So these are the information you need. First, you need the name of your Azure storage account. You can find that in the storage accounts module and here they are. Second, you need a key associated with that account. You can find the storage accounts keys in storage accounts. And then you click the name of the account, and then account keys. And then you'll notice that each storage account has two keys. You just need one of them. So take note of one key and that's what you'll need. Third, you need also the setting of that account's secure transfer required toggle switch. So you can find this setting again in storage accounts and then the name of the account and then you go to configuration and then it's this setting here, secure transfer required. You need to check whether it's disabled or enabled. Take note of that. And then fourth, you need an existing file share under that storage account. So. We have one here named Azure File Share. So we take note of that as well. Once you have all that information on hand, you can then proceed to your Jscape MFT server instance to configure the settings required there. The first thing we need to do is add an Azure File Service reverse proxy. And to do that, just go to the reverse proxies module and click the add button. Next, select Microsoft Azure file service from the drop down list and then click OK. After that, you need to enter pertinent information into the reverse proxy parameters fields. This would typically include the following. Uh, you need a name, so you enter a descriptive name for this reverse proxy service. You will also use this name to refer to this service in later steps. Then you also need a username. This is simply the name of the Azure storage account that uh, I showed you earlier. You also need a password. This is just this is basically just one of the keys associated with this Azure storage account, which I also showed you earlier. And lastly, if you enable the secure transfer required toggle switch in Azure, then make sure you check the use SSL checkbox. If you want to test uh, whether you can make a connection, you may click the test server button. If the test succeeds, then that means you have made a successful connection with your Azure share. The next step is to add a virtual path that maps to the reverse proxy service you created earlier. In doing so, user accounts who have access to this path will be able to see or detect this path as well as whatever files are stored in it from within their client application. Now you can add a virtual path to either a user account or a group. But in this example, let's just add a path to a user account. So to do that, just edit a user account, navigate to the Paths tab, and click the Add button. When the Add Virtual Path dialog appears, specify the name of the path as it should appear 
from within the client application. So in our case, we want this path to appear just right below the account's root path as a folder named Azure Share. So we enter forward slash Azure Share into the path field. Next, click the reverse proxy radio button and select the name of the reverse proxy you created earlier. In our case, that would be Azure File Share. So click OK to proceed. You should then see your newly added virtual path in the list of virtual paths for this user account. So we're done setting things up on the server. We can already see how this looks like when viewed from a client application. So here we are on a web browser and we're about to log in to our Jscape MFT server web user interface. So let's log in using the user account whose virtual path we set up earlier. And once you've logged in, you should then be able to see and navigate into the virtual path you created. And you can upload files to it. You can delete those files. You can do your name and so on. Now the, the important thing to remember here is that those files you uploaded won't be stored on your MFT server's local disk. Rather, they'll be streamed directly to your Azure file share. So if I go to Azure now and go to my Azure file share. So here are those files on my Azure file share. Again, all this will be transparent to your end users who will be interacting with the virtual path and all the files inside it as if it were a local folder on your server. That's it. Now you know how to use Azure files as the file storage system of your MFT server. Music